Welcome back to our series on filters within Tableau. After that jam-packed session on dimension filters, we will be moving over next to measure filters. Just to see where we are, we've already covered the topics of um, basic filters, looking at global filters, which includes extract and data source filters. And we are halfway by looking at the accessible filters of context and dimension. And what is left in upcoming episodes would be our date filter and then how to cascade these filters. So still a lot of useful information coming up, especially in this video. So do stay tuned and let's first look at the data. The data which we are looking at, as, as mentioned, is from the Kaggle website and it's a CSV file which is also available obviously um, from our site and you'll find the, um, the link in the comment section. This is basically one CSV file with um, about 24,000 lines and a few columns. What you will notice in here as well is it ranges from the time that um, Kickstarter was um, brought to life back in April 2009 until January 2018 is the most recent data we have in there. Now let's just run through each of the um, fields to understand what each of them are used for as we'll obviously be using this in, um, in our filtering as well. So firstly we have the ID field which is a unique identifier with the name of the project. We also have a category as well as a main category in which this project is listed on the Kickstarter, project, uh, Kickstarter website. We have a country indicator. We'll notice that um, a lot of them are already are from the US, being a US um, entity, but um, there are also a number of other countries in there. We have a date that the project was launched on Kickstarter. So um, when we are starting to look for backers, we also have a deadline at, when, at, at the time at the, that the project closes the currency that the um, amounts are in. So we've got a goal and a pledged amount. So obviously goal is the, um, the amount or the target that needs to be reached for this project to be continuing and the pledged amount um, as well, which has already at this point in time when this extract was, was made is the amount which has been received for this project or pledged as such. Then we also have a state with um, indicating the state of the project. It's not state as in geographical um, references, but more on the state. So we can see some of the project failed, some have been successful, others are still live. And um, next we've got total number of backers thus far, uh, also the goal and the pledged in USD amount, as we do have some in the local currency for these entities. And that's in essence the file which we'll take forward to the next section. All right, now we are focusing on the measure filter. So we are focusing on these ones over here, which are shown in green. So normally these would be uh, your uh, continuous measures and they are shown by green, as I mentioned, normally by green. And they work in a similar approach as our dimension filters, although here we are working with different ranges. And a big distinction that um, needs to be made with using these measure filters is once you drag it into the filter, you basically have um, the first option to look at all values, which is at a not aggregated a, a level, so at each individual record, or you'll be looking at um, the remaining ones, which would be your uh, aggregated level. So if we focus first, or if we have a first look at the all values, um, you, we can see we are given another couple of options. We can focus on the range of values, so we, have, we define a start and end, or we can just start, uh, uh, provide them a, a lower limit or just an upper limit as such. So you can see that we have values in our database from zero backers up to 73,206 backers on a specific record. So let's say um, we were tasked to say exclude anything less than a hundred. Actually, just, let's just close that firstly and add in um, the category or let's say the main category and number of records into a sheet. We can see our total that we've got. We've got 15 marks, but our total number of records, let's actually add number of backers. So our total number of backers would be 578,000. So if we were to visualize this using a bar chart, um, and we then let's just remove that and we go and change the uh, or add the filter to the sum of backers and we say yeah we want to look at all values but only where it's above a hundred 
we can then see automatically it changes. So this would focus then, and you can see that the slider has also changed. There's a little bit of space, but let's make it a thousand. Um, it, it filters basically the total number of, um, or it filters basically all of the individual records which have less than a thousand um, backers in, in, in their own field. Okay, so that is the non-aggregated part. And it normally works like a, an Excel filter where you would say, you know, exclude anything below a certain level. But this is Tableau and we work a lot with aggregated data. So I will just call this dimension filter non-aggregated. And then we can look at the next one. So here what we'll do, for instance, is show a similar view with the main category as a bar chart, oh, well, let's first add our measure, with the number of backers as a bar chart and using the main category as the color. So we would be wanting to say, let us only show categories then that collectively have had more than a specific amount of backers. So how we would do that, putting the backers into the filter and say the summary needs to be more than 50,000. And we will say at least and we will update this once again to 50,000, ignoring the upper limit over there and hitting apply. And you can see there were only four categories that in, in, in totality had that. And we, can, and we can do the inverse. We can say, well, up to 50,000 or including 50,000, we will see the remaining ones. So pretty easy um, to use dimension filters uh, on an aggregate level to, to get to your information that you are looking for. When we use a range of values, we need to be careful, however. All right. Let me show you why. If we use the um, if we use a, a filter on the main category, let's change this up. Let's call this, let's have a look at the categories and use the main category as our filter. And we just focus on art for now. So these are only art categories, which we can see. And let's just remove that for a second. So these are all of the categories from highest to lowest with the number of backers in that specific category. So if we now wanted to say, and maybe let's just edit this filter, to say that we want to look at a range of values. And let's actually remove that completely because we want to see all of them. Uh, let's see the highest one was 6,550. So let's add backers in there again. And we want to look at the sum. So as you can see, Tableau populates the lower and upper limits. So here we're sitting with 6,150 in the art category. And if we now say, all right, we want to look at anything from 1,000 upwards on an aggregate level, we can also just type it, obviously. And say from 1,000 level upwards, we, sit, we, well, we end up with two categories, the art and illustration inside the main art category. But and yes, we've specified 1000 and we didn't specify the upper limit because obviously Tableau takes it the upper limit automatically, right? Let's see if that's the case. So if we change this filter now to comics, for instance, and hit OK, and let's just have a look at this filter, we can see something else has happened here. So we previously had 6150, but guess what? The upper limit now is way more for the um, comics category main category, I should say. So you might potentially be losing out on data here. So be very careful when using the range of values, rather specify an upper or low limit, except if you have clear parameters to use the um, a specific range. So word of caution over there. And we can just save this as range of values. And let's start a new sheet. So if we now have a look um, we've got a similar issue as we've just looked at. If we have a look and create a visualization by using the main category into our rows and we perhaps look at the, let's say the number of backers once again. And let's use a bar chart. All right, so if we have that and we say we want to look at a specific range for this category. So if we put in the number of backers into our filter and we want to see only where the sum of backers were in fact more than 140,000, for instance. Again, using the at least, because we, um, we've, we've we know the dangers of using the range of values. 
if we use at least, we can see anything above 140,000. So that shouldn't be a problem, right? Well, be careful once again. So because if we do change the um, level of detail, that's when we might end up in trouble. So I'm actually just going to remove this country uh, filter from this specific sheet. And um, then we can see at least all categories and just put that into the colors category as well. So, but we did say we want to filter only from 140,000 onwards. So you'll see that it has actually filtered it like that. But if we change the level of detail by adding in, not the main category as color, but the category as color. So putting that there, change the level of detail, we end up with less records. And the only reason why we wanted to put that in there was just to see the breakdown of the category into different subcategories, but not a good idea. So if we do remember this, whenever your level of detail changes, this would be a problem for you. So how do we get around that? Now, they, we can remove these and rather focus, let's just clean all of them, uh, let's leave it like that, and rather focus on a dimension filter. Of course, what you will do, you will say you want to look at main category and you'll specify a condition. As you remember earlier, we can do a sum of the backers more than 140,000, for instance. We hit apply and we again have the same number. If we now do change the level of detail and just say add all, you can see nothing changes in the number that is being showed. So this is a way to get around that. So do be careful when using measure filters that um, if your level of detail changes, you might end up in a little bit of problems. So I'll just call this level of detail. And that concludes our section on measure filters. Next, we'll be looking at date filters, still staying within the, um, the accessible filters, which will also be our last one. But our date filter works slightly different, but uh, do stay tuned and see you in the next one.